Hey, what's up guys? Harry here and today I've got a video for you about should drivers accept requests that are 10 to 15 minutes away. So there are a lot of drivers who will just go out there and drive, accept whatever rides come in, go wherever the night takes them and that's totally fine. Personally, I think there are a lot of times where it pays to be a little more, let's call it cutthroat, right? Where you can use a little strategy, use a little, you know, kind of these tactics basically to earn yourself more money, right? Now, when you get a request on Uber, it gives you an estimated time of arrival. We have a really good video if you haven't started driving yet or of how to use the Uber driver app and you'll see exactly what pops up every time a request comes in. One of the key things that they give you is the estimated time to arrival. Now, it's not perfect, but it gives you a general idea of where the passenger is, right? How far you have to drive to get them. Now, personally, I drive in the Los Angeles market, which is pretty busy, and I, whenever I get a request that's 10 to 12 minutes away or more, I'll actually ignore that request, let it come through, and I won't accept it, right? So Uber's new acceptance rate policy, as long as you're not going for guarantees, it allows you to miss as many requests as you want, basically, right, to not accept them. So. The reason why I do this though is actually because I think that I know usually most of the time that I actually have a really good chance of getting a request within a few minutes that's going to be a lot closer. And so, you know, remember, you know, they have that new deactivation policy, so you don't need to worry about that unless you're on guarantees. If you're in a smaller market though, or you drive during times where it's not nearly as busy, your strategy might be a bit different. But what is the same is that you're always sort of thinking about how far you're willing to go to pick someone up, right? If you take every single request that comes in, there could be some requests that are very potentially gonna lose you money, right? If it's very far and the rider is going a short distance. So remember that all the time, as soon as you get that request, all the time that you drive from that point to pick up your rider is unpaid time. And the other key thing that I don't, I don't think a lot of drivers really take advantage of this, but when the request comes in, as soon as you tap it, it obviously accepts it, right? But you have 10 seconds to actually accept this request. So what I do is when this request comes in, I actually really study the map and Uber doesn't give you the full information. It doesn't tell you exactly where they are. But a lot of times, if you know your city well, you can sort of get a good idea. You can see a big cross street, or you can sort of see where that passenger is going to be, a general area. It doesn't tell you the address, but you can see based off the ETA and then maybe some of the streets around it, you can get a good sense of where they are, especially if you really study for those 10 seconds, 10 or whatever it is, 10, 12 seconds. That's a long time if you're just sitting there staring at it, right? And where this comes in handy is, let's say I get a request at 11 p.m and it's 12 minutes away and I can see that it's in the bar area or near kind of the main strip of bars. Um, should I take that request? Most of the time, I'm probably going to ignore that request because I know that it's probably someone going a short distance. I don't know for sure, but most often, right, in those kind of hours after people get dropped off, you know, a lot of people get dropped off up to about 10 or 11 and then they start leaving, you know, from 11 or two, uh, from like 12 or 1 and onwards, right? So there's kind of that middle lull time or a lot of people are just bar hopping, those are the short rides I want to avoid. I'd rather get a ride that's, you know, 15 minutes, or sorry, that's uh, nearby, right, that's going into that bar area as opposed to someone that's just going to short hop from bar to bar, right? So that's sort of where it comes in handy and why you want to think about that ETA. Now, where you can really get burned is when you drive 10 to 15 minutes to pick up a passenger and they do a minimum fare ride, right? Now, there's not a whole lot you can do about this. Actually, I should say there are, you know, there are some some more, I call them kind of like gray hat or black hat tactics that some drivers will do in this situation. They'll call the rider and ask them where they're going. Um, personally, I'm not a fan of this strategy at all. I think that it's sort of, um, you know, really you can use, you know, I'm okay with kind of like pushing the limits and using some of these strategies, but where I kind of draw the line is where you start to do things like that and, you know, kind of try to really cherry pick the rides and go beyond uh, what Uber sort of wants you to do. So personally, I'm not okay with doing that, but let's say that they are 10 or 15 minutes away. Uh, I'm okay with calling that passenger and saying, hey, I just want to confirm that you want me to come all the way out there and pick you up because I am kind of far away. Um, you may be able to get a closer driver by re-requesting, but I'm happy to do this ride, right? and sort of do it that way and sort of position it that way instead because you also don't want to be driving out there and then the passenger cancels on you and then you don't get paid for it. So 
Um, there's not a whole lot you can do uh, within the kind of framework of the app, I guess you would say, sort of how they design it to avoid those short rides. So that's sort of where, why, where and why you need to think about it, right? Think about where they are and where they might be headed um, if it is going to be that long ETA ride. And, uh, you know, because if you're going to have to drive 10 or 15 minutes, I mean, you might do one out of the kindness of your heart here and there. But if you're continually doing that and the rides are often short, you're probably losing money. Right? So you got to definitely think about that side of the equation too. I've seen a handful of emails though from lately from Uber, which is kind of exciting me that actually uh, Uber emailed some drivers and they're kind of, I think they're testing and piloting this in a few markets where on long trips, Uber is actually giving them, they're emailing these drivers and saying, hey, we noticed that you had a really long ETA pickup and then it was a short ride. We're going to add a dollar or we're going to add two dollars, which I think is a really cool feature. And we just wrote an article about all the top features I'd like to see come to Uber and Lyft. And this is sort of one of those things that I mentioned. It would be nice to get some type of little boost for having to go out 10 to 15 minutes. Because frankly, if a drive, if a passenger lives way the heck out there, is requesting a ride from way the heck out there, they should have to pay a little bit of a premium, right? Um, I also saw a screenshot from Lyft that Lyft actually is testing in some markets too a little prime time boost, right? So uh, I saw a screenshot that said we're adding 25% to this ride while the driver, once the driver accepted it, it said 25% for long ETA or something like that. And so that driver got a 25% boost on that ride because it was a farther pickup. So keep experimenting. If you guys have seen anything or if you have any strategies to sort of combat this, I definitely would love to hear from you. I mean, if you guys like this video, I'm looking for more of the strategy and, you know, more like how, what type of thinking goes into which type of requests you take, kind of how to get a little more cutthroat, as I like to call it, definitely head over to MaximumRideSharingProfits.com. That's our video training course. I'll leave a link in the show notes. We've got lots more of that type of content, more of the advanced videos, more of the strategies type stuff, where we really want to try and help you increase your earning because, you know, it's easy to get the basics. It's easy to get the hang of it, to sort of take it to the next level and start thinking about all these things. That's what we want to help you with. So if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to like the video, give us a little thumbs up. Uh, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, definitely do that. We release new videos every single week and uh, look forward to hearing from you. Take care. See you soon.